Alrighty, here we go. Happy, happy Tuesday. My name is Wendy Lee, and you can find me at creativelyyours.com. And we're going to have a little bit of fun today, making a super fun, I think super fun, super cute little uh, card today using our Hey Chuck bundle. I love Chuck. I don't know if you guys love Chuck as much as I do, but those chickens and the attitudes, I guess they're technically roosters, right? But I love their little attitude in their faces. But today we're going to talk a little bit more about um, changing up your designer series paper to add the colors that you need to coordinate with whatever project you're working on, right? Uh, so we've got that going on. I'm going to go ahead and um, switch the camera over and we'll get started. All right, let's do it. A little bit of a delay. There we go. Perfect. Let me also fix. Okay, that is still good. All right. Perfect. 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 All right. So today, as I mentioned, we are going to let's get my my uh, camera up here so I can see your comments. Perfect. All right. Good deal. Hey, Connie. Hey, Jean. So glad you guys are here. Definitely. Say hello if you pop in. Uh, love to see who's who's joining me today on the live or the replay. Definitely leave me a comment if you've got any questions or just let me know um, if you're liking what we're doing um, each week. So here we go. So we are using Hey Chuck. So fun, so fun. And I've had a couple of people ask me about this set and how to use some of the sentiments. Like, like Rise and Shine was in particular what they asked about. To me, this is get up and get the day started. It's your birthday, right? To me, this is all about celebration and um, talking about what's going on and you're doing great. Hey, Dawn, thanks for joining us today as well. Um, so I think that all of these work with the birthday, but I also think it's just, you know, really, you could use this for congratulations. You know, if you, you rule the roost, you've got something to talk about, right? So I think it's a pretty versatile set. Um, from that perspective and the chickens are hilarious and they're not too bad to color because they're not so big and you don't have to color them extensively. So I'm going to show you that today as well. And then we've got the coordinating dies and I love it. So they cut out the images and then you've got these extra two pieces um, to add a little more fun to your projects, right? And I think this coordinates really nicely with the Hey Chick and the Hey Birthday Chick. Those are two stamp sets that have retired, but would go fabulously with these. Hey, Ellen, so glad you're here as well. Yeah, I think this set is adorable. Definitely adorable. Who doesn't want the roosters to go with our chicks that we've already got, right? Um, so I think this coordinates really, really well. Um, this is also the bundle that we are featuring for this month's uh, Cultivated Creativity. That is my DIY paper crafting kit that ships right to you. Um, comes with lots and lots of goodies, and you make five projects. I will show you a sneak peek of those at the end. So what are we creating today? So as I mentioned, we're going to change up our designer series paper. So we did this... Um, a couple of weeks ago, I showed a treat holder. Let me show you that first. So a couple of weeks ago, we made this lovely treat holder. We colored in Chuck. And then we changed up our designer paper by adding a little bit of um, misty moonlight to our color here, just to be able to tie that in with our focal image. So we're going to do a little bit of that today as well. Um, of course, a totally different card. So here is one variation using that same plaid where I pulled in mossy meadow and real red cute 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 and we've even colored our gems to bring that red right in there as well okay and then today what we're going to do i'm not going to do this color variation i'm going to do this color variation so i've got one here where we went along with the mattress ticking print and drew some additional real red lines in there now i started out trying to skip every other one and look ah i messed up and I forgot what I was doing halfway through. That's okay. It looks great either way. Now on this one, I decided to go the opposite direction and make it more of a plaid. So that's what we're going to do today. But we're going to do another variation of this. Um, just because I think it's fun and you can see a lot of difference in what happens when you change this up. Hey, Susan. So glad you're here. Oh, first day of school. Oh, 
Yes. No crafting time or crafting time with no interruptions. That's lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Yeah. I had um, my grandchildren here quite a bit last week. So um, I know what you're talking about, right? All right. So let's get started with this one. I'm going to start with, let's do our stamping and coloring first. So I've got my scrap paper and I'm stamping on very vanilla today. And I just realized I don't have Chuck mounted on a block. So let's, we got crazy chicken. So here's a crazy chicken. And then let me go grab a block real quick. I don't know how I missed Chuck. He's important to what we're doing today, right? We need that one. All righty. I've been in full design mode today, working on the next Cultivated Creativity Kit because this kit's registration closes, sadly, this Saturday. So if you're not already a subscriber to the program, give it a go, try it out if you love Chuck, or even if you um, don't wanna get Chuck, you can use your other chicken stamp, stamp sets that you've got, or you could mix and match other things. So there is Chuck stamped in Memento Ink on Very Vanilla. Now we're gonna keep our coloring simple, right? We don't wanna do a ton of coloring. We want this to be a fast, easy card. So I'm pulling in my Real Red and my Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blends. You could use markers for this, I think as well. It's entirely up to you. I'm not gonna do a ton of shading either. It's a small image. Um, so you really don't have a lot that you need to worry about, but you can if you want to. If you wanna get that shading in there, you go right ahead. So got his little hair on the top, his tongue. Let's do this little, what's that, a goozle? What is that called? Wobbler? I don't know, whatever you wanna call it. And then we're gonna color in our tail feathers. Now I like to use the bull tip when I color. You choose what makes you happy, but I feel like I've got a little more control. And if I am gonna add shading in, I have a little um, easier way to blend it when I'm using the bull tip, okay? All right, and then I'm gonna use the light red and we're gonna just do his little eyelid there. Gives it just a little bit softer. I'm not gonna use the light daffodil. I'm just gonna go right into the dark daffodil and we'll color this in. Now you could die cut and then color if you prefer. I actually find it a little easier to color if I die cut after I color. All right, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna actually color the body, okay? So we've got a coordinating die. Let me grab that, this one right here. So you just line that up and let's run that through our die cutting machine. And we've got our little rooster here. So I have some uh, backing paper on the back because I accidentally pre-did this and put dimensionals on the back. And it is a habit of mine when I put dimensionals on the back that I immediately peel off the backing. So I was afraid these would stick to everything. So that's why they're on that backing paper there. So that was just left over from my glue dots. All right, next. Now I've already stamped this, but I've got a real red layer. And I am going to save a little bit of cardstock here. So you can see we've got this red layer here and then we've got our vanilla and our other um, layers over the top. So you're not going to see a hole in that red layer. So I stamped my sentiment and then I'm using my stylish shapes dies, one of my faves. Let me pull those in so you guys can see these, these right here and die cut that sentiment. So I'm going to have a hole. Let's see. Oh, it didn't die cut all the way through. All right. That's okay. I will just bend that back and forth. That's looking pretty good. If I'm worried, I can come back in with my snips and get that little bit off that didn't cut. It's because I was in a hurry. I forgot that I didn't have this layer. So now I've got a hole in that layer. That's okay. Again, we're gonna cover that up, but we're gonna save a little paper by doing that. Okay. What other stamping do we need to do? Um, let's do the inside layer. So the inside very vanilla layer. I have got the sentiment happy birthday. So let's stamp this in memento as well. And then I'm gonna get this out of my way. Oh, I do have one more piece to stamp. Let's see, let's see how crooked this is. Ooh, yay, not too bad. Oh, but look, I put my hands, look at that. I got my hands all over it. Let's see if we can erase that. Now, have you guys ever tried a sand eraser? 
Let me see if I can find mine. So I ordered it off Amazon. We don't sell it through Stampin' Up, but it's a good tool to know about. Um, so this is it. It's a mono sand eraser. Mine says 512A. It's a Tombow product. And you can just lightly erase small ink smudges. Now, this may be a little too dark or I may have to go too deep. So we may have to flip this over. But what it's doing is it's really removing the cardstock. So you could end up with a hole if you go too deep. But it really just lightens it up. I don't think it takes it away 100% unless I go really deep into the cardstock. But I wanted you to know that this is a handy dandy tool. I may just be too dark to do this. My friend Nancy does a really great job with being able to use this tool and erase 100%. So I lightened it, but it's still not to my liking. So I'm gonna flip it over and try again. <laughs> but I wanted you to be aware of that tool because it is a really nice one. So what happened was I've got ink all over my lid of my memento pad and I wrapped my fingers around it is what happened. And that's why I got all that ink on there. So we're gonna try this again, make sure I wipe it off on my shirt, right? <laughs> that's why we keep a towel close by, paper towel, right? At all times. I did much better that time. I'm gonna go put this ink pad away. I gotta clean that up later. Let's see if I can get all the ink off my fingers. All right, do you guys do that? Do you guys make that same mistake I just made and get ink all over everything? I am definitely guilty of that. Let's bring in our scrap paper and then we've got a piece of pebbled path I'm also gonna stamp on. So we're gonna make our own designer series paper. Hey, Janet, so glad you're here today as well. Um, so we're gonna make our own designer series paper by stamping with one of our images. And so I'm making a lovely birthday card. I am just going to stamp this little birthday cake all over my layer here. Now I like to turn it like I'm doing here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to look like I cut this out of a piece of designer series paper, right? Um, so I think if you turn it, then it's not, it, you know, it just looks a little more haphazard. I'm not gonna worry about this spot right here that I have a little bit of a hole because I'm gonna cover that up anyway. So it's okay. Good deal. All right, so that was my pebbled path. All right, so I think all of our stamping is done. So let's go ahead and work on our designer paper next. So this is the print. It's This is like a mattress ticking print. Um, and this is from the Let's Go Fishing designer series paper pack. So this is the paper that is going to come in this month's Cultivated Creativity Kit. And I love it, love it, love it, love it. And when you see the project, you'll, you probably wouldn't even guess that that's the paper that we're using. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my dark real red blend. And again, one of the samples I showed you, right? We went right with the stripes, so you can do that. Or you can go across the stripes and make a plaid, which is what we're gonna do today. Now here I did every half inch. So let's change that up a little bit, why not? So I've just got a strip of paper. I'm gonna start somewhere in the middle and um, then we'll go back and, and fix that. So I'm just using my ruler as a guide. Um, and I like to start off and come off the paper because if you start on and stop on, then your lines aren't even with. And maybe that's okay. Maybe you're all right with that. I think I'm gonna do this one every three eighths of an inch. Let's see what that does. And it really can go pretty quickly. Whoops, I wrote on my ruler. That's okay. We can get that off with some rubbing alcohol. Clean that up, making a mess here. Sometimes I change my width right in the middle of it, and that's okay. What I wanted you to know is that it's you don't have to be perfect with this. Okay. I don't know if I need the whole thing or not. Let's see. One, two. I'm probably pretty good with where I'm. Well, I'm going to do the whole thing. Why not do the whole thing? Let's go ahead and do the whole thing. If we end up with some scraps, we end up with some scraps. I'll be sad if I don't do the whole thing and then find that I needed it. Yeah, I'm not going to worry about that corner. All right, so let me rotate this and go the other direction. Three eighths. I almost went back to a half. 
So really, you can do whatever with you want to, right? But I love that we can totally change our paper to meet our needs, right? All right, I think I'm gonna go in and maybe add a second one, maybe every few. Let's see, what do we got? Skip a couple. Let's do another one. Oh, I changed my width and now I got crooked. That's okay. We'll skip and come down here. I don't know about you guys, but I do that a lot where I forget what I'm doing. Now you could change the colors up in here as well and do multiple colors. I've stuck with the, the dark red, but you could mix the light red in there. We could put a little bit of the daffodil. Should we put a little daffodil? I've not tried one with this. Let's go with the um, mattress ticking line and let's add that little daffodil here and there. Well, it helped if my uh, thing wouldn't move on me. So let's skip two. Let's see what happens. You guys liking that? The point being, you can make this whatever you want to make this. You can add in as many colors as you want or as few a colors as you want. But it's great because I didn't even have to use pecan pie on this card. I did choose to, but I wouldn't have had to because I could have pulled in any color that I wanted to do. And look, that looks completely different than it did when we started, right? By making it our own plaid. Love it, love it, love it, love it. All right, we are ready to assemble. Have you guys tried this before? Making your own designer paper? Two different ways to do it. All right, so we're gonna fold our card base in half. I will have the complete supply list um, as well as the dimensions for this project added after the video, right? Um, you'll have everything that you need to be able to recreate this. So you can just click on the list and add items to your shopping cart if you'd like to, um, or use what you've got at home. All right, so I'm just going to adhere my vanilla layer onto my red layer. Okay, and then we'll adhere this to the front of the card. So it will take me a couple minutes to update the video afterwards to get all the information added in. So be patient, but you will have that information. All right, so my strip I have is cut the right width, but the length I need, I'm gonna have to cut that. So that is three and a half. So let's cut that, let's bring in our paper trimmer. Love my paper trimmer. Move some of our things out of the way so I don't just damage them. And let's go ahead and cut this at three and a half inches. So there's one. And then we'll do this one. And look, I was able to avoid my crazy, my crazy line there. So I've got my two plaids, my new plaids that I just made. Super fun. Now I'm gonna put these down first. I'm gonna do the outer edges and then we can just put the middle one wherever we want to put it. We will center it best to our ability. So I'm looking at these three sides and I'm just eyeballing it to make it centered is what I'm looking for. So right along there. So let's repeat that. We're gonna rotate, repeat that on the other side. Just put a little seal on here. Oh, good. Ellen, you haven't tried this yet. I'm I'm super excited for you to give it a go. It's so easy and fun. I think it's fun, right? Who has a stack of designer series paper sitting around that they never use because they just don't have the colors, right? It doesn't really go with their projects they're working on. So you can totally change the feel of that designer series paper. And this is great for masculine cards to be able to do this, especially, I think. So we've got our little stamped paper in there. So we're making our own designer series paper. So, so many fun things that we're doing today with this. So let's bring in, I've got a circle, pebbled path circle that I die cut with my third largest circle for my stylish shapes dies. If you don't have these, put these on your list. They're so great. You're, you won't regret having them. They're, they're just wonderful. And then I've got a little bit of this pebbled path ribbon. I'm going to put a small bit of adhesive in the middle. I know that's weird, but it helps me kind of align this. I'm going to fold it in half. 
Okay. And then I want to adhere it to my circle here. Now I've got a spot ever so slightly. I don't know if you can see it where I missed the edge and I've got a divot. So I'm going to make sure that this stays on this side of the card because I'm going to cover it up with my sentiments. All right. So I'm keeping that over here. And so on this side is where I want my ribbon. So there's where I'm making my little, my little mark with my finger. And then now I can just tuck my ribbon right there. Uh, maybe we'll go a little bit deeper. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, slightly deeper than it was. That's a really nice touch. Let's go ahead and dimension this up. Got to pop it up, right? Perfect, perfect. Backings off these, and then we will pop this right on to our card. So we have lots of fun and exciting things going on right now, um, at least in my world, right? I have been working on swaps, and swaps are where we trade projects with other demonstrators um, because we are able to order from the new mini catalog. I can show you the cover of the mini catalog, but I cannot show you the inside, but let me grab it. So as a demonstrator, one of our many, many perks that I enjoy personally, or very much show, so enjoy, is being able to order products early. I have it so buried, I'm struggling to find it. There it is. There it is. And of course, I write my name on the front cover as soon as I get it, because I'm like, Nobody can have my catalog. I have to keep track of it. And I will probably have two of them with my name on it because I have my, although I'm in the same room and it's probably a five foot, if that walk, um, I have my design table that I'm working on and then I have my office table. So I'm at my computer, but this is the new mini catalog chopped full. Let's see how many pages, 83 pages of fabulousness. Yes, yes, yes. So if you um, have placed an order with me in the last six months, um, you're eligible for a free catalog for me. Uh, you do need to let me know you want one and I will send that out to you. If you have not placed an order with me in the last six months, you can order and I will send you one or you can request a catalog for me. Um, and I will, uh, it's $5 for the mini catalog, and then I'll include a $5 coupon so you get your money back. Awesome, right? Okay, so we've got our sentiment. Let's go ahead and add our little rooster here. But I love it because as a demonstrator, we get to pre-order and get our hands on those magnificent goodies early. So if you have any desire to get your products at a discount and want to get your hands on goodies early, let me know. I'd love to have you join my diamond team. Okay, so that is looking pretty darn good. Let's bring in, I love these, the sparkle adhesive gems. Now, I used a whole bunch of silver ones recently, so I don't have hardly any silver left. And I used a whole bunch of black ones recently, so I hardly have any of those left. And now I'm ready to use up my gold ones. But for this project, we're going to stick with the black. I'm going to pull one of these off, and we're just going to sprinkle these on, right? I think maybe I'll put little ones over here since I've got more of them. Really doesn't matter what size you use. Could mix and match. Could use all the same size, whatever makes you happy. But I will definitely be ordering more of these. I've gone through so many packs already, but they have all that fabulous sparkle in them. So fun, so fun. All right, let's go ahead and put our layer on the inside. There's the part I messed up on the back. That we're going to hide underneath. Yes. So you could bring even more design to the inside by adding a little bit of designer paper. You know, you could even take this and cut it in half and put it in the corner. You know what I mean by that? Let me show you. Like cut it in half diagonally. We'll see. We'll see if we want to use this. We might not. So if I put this on my trimmer with my point in the cutting channel, right? And then I want my blade somewhere in the center. It doesn't have to be middle, but somewhere inside of those points. And then I'm going to cut towards the points so that I don't crush them, right? So now I've got this little bitty scrap. But if I wanted to add a little bit more design to the inside with my designer paper, I could adhere these, you know, right down in the corners. So I could do one side, kind of fun. You could do opposite corners. 
I kind of like that. What do you guys think? Should I add it in? Hey, Connie. So glad you're here. Uh, try the plaid near future. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, um, you can really, any stripe designer paper, um, you can do this with, you can change up a plaid, an already existing plaid paper. Um, if you've got polka dot type paper, you can color some of the dots, um, which is also a fun way to go about that. Or at least I think it's a fun way to go about it. Um, let me go ahead and grab my silicone craft sheet. And why not? Let's put these in. I'm going totally rogue. Totally rogue. So I'm grabbing my silicone craft sheet because I can run my adhesive all the way to the point and it's not going to stick to that, which is great. There we go. We're just taking our scraps and using those up. Okay, got that all the way to the point and that one. Okay, there's a lot of adhesive on those little triangles. They should stay put. All right, cute. I like that. I think that was a fun way to bring the design to the inside. So fun, 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 fun. Okay, so do you have a favorite? Do you like where we did more of the red and added the yellow in? Or do you like it a little simpler? Or do you like it staying with the stripes? So that's three different ways that we've done that one print. And then of course, we've taken a plaid and added some additional color to it as well with some other colors. Yes, you like the corners? Good, good, good. Glad that you guys like that. Kind of fun. All right, so let me show you a sneak peek of this month's Cultivated Creativity Kit. So we'll move these over to the side real quick. Let me show you. So this is the class. So as I mentioned, we do five projects every month. Um, four are cards and one is not a card. So as you can see, we've got a lovely box. Super cute box. And there's a nice surprise inside. Not gonna tell you what it is. And then this one is a fun fold. So when you open this up, it's got some excitement going on. I'm not going to show you that. Um, and then here's a regular card here that's super cute. And like I said, if you don't have the roosters, you know, we're using the Let's Go Fishing paper, the backsides. Um, so if you had the fishing um, suite, the, the dies and stamps, you could totally change this to the fishing as well. Um, I love the chickens, but you could use the girl chickens that you've already got at home as well. And then here's this one. So fun. And then one more fun fold. Fun, fun, fun stuff. So these are fantastic. They do have a little bit of a masculine feel, in my opinion, with the colors that we've chosen to do. Um, but you can mix and match that up as well. So I hope you guys will join us for that. Um, I do have one extra kit left from last month's Cultivated Creativity. So you can kind of see how they're packaged. So they are packaged, you'll have your little card. And this card we made today is actually the bonus card that I'm putting in the packet. So every month I make a card um, to put into everybody's packet as a little thank you. Uh, and we also include that in the tutorial as a bonus. So obviously you're seeing it here live, right? But uh, you get the PDF tutorial as well when you join us. And so the kit has all the goodies in it. So this was Darlene Details. And I don't have all the projects, but I can show you a couple of the cards if you hadn't seen that one. So here's one and here's another. But uh, I don't have the others anymore. I've given those away, right? I gift them all away. But I have one kit if anybody's interested. It is $39. I can only ship in the U.S. because it contains product. So, um, but we do offer um, PDF tutorials for past kits. Um, this one will not be available. Hey, Chuck will not be available until the middle of September. Uh, because we want our subscribers to have dibs, right? We want them to feel... Um, as important as they are to us, right? Everybody's important to us, but but especially our subscribers. Um, we want them to have the perks of getting things first and being able to enjoy, enjoy their kits before others get access to the content. All right, perfect. Thank you, Janet. I'm glad you liked this one. Yes, and you have the designer series paper. Great, it's a great way to use it, right? Like I looked at it at first and I was like, okay, fishing, I, it's cute, but the backsides have so much versatility to them. I could see, you know, changing these up and making Christmas cards, right, with these. A little candy cane stripe, right? Could change your images out. If this 
Chuck had, if I had a little uh, Santa hat, Chuck would have a Santa hat on. Mm -hmm. I can see it coming. Definitely can see it coming. All right. If you guys enjoyed the content today, give me a thumbs up. If you've got any questions and I missed answering them, please leave me a question after the video and I will come back and answer those. Um, I appreciate you joining me. Share this with your crafty friends. Invite them to come over. And I hope to see you all again next Tuesday for a little more crafty fun. All right. Thanks so much. And I will talk to you soon. Bye for now.